Welcome to the Flip Credit Trading Show. My name is Gary Fickard, known to many as FX Big Dog. And in this session, all we do is, yeah, you got it. We chase after 20 flips in the market. Now, sometimes we hold positions a little bit longer, and uh, but we still, at the end of the day, we're looking for a 20 pip net profit. So traders, let's go ahead and take a look and see exactly what's happened to the market so far, because we did have some new US data that has moved the market, and the Feds are talking about raising the rates at least three times. Global Sachs believes that there's going to be a four-time rate decision this year. So are the Feds going to be aggressive? Well, let's go take a look and see what the markets are doing and how our trades are doing. So with that being said, I'll see you right after this. Well, welcome back, traders, and yes, uh, welcome to the uh, Pip Grab Trading Show, where we chase off the 20 pips in the market. Make sure you got your cup of coffee, tea, whatever it is that you drink in the early mornings. Uh, this is not that early, but for me, it definitely deserves a cup of coffee. Now, traders, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what's going on with the market. We have got a uh, few trades being placed uh, already. We did uh, we did uh, take a look at the news out this week, and we've got some data coming out. We did get CPI. I haven't really checked the CPI data this morning. But we, did, we are getting CPI data coming out this morning as well. It is monthly data. But again, if we do start seeing still an increase in inflation, I guess the Feds are going to be paying a lot more attention to those, to those details. Because they haven't really spoken. They've already spoken about raising the rates three times this year, starting in March. Now, the global... Uh, 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 <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to get uh, uh, get started this morning. I haven't had my uh, cup of coffee that's uh, kick-started the, the motor yet. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we've, we've, we have got indication that there's there's a possibility that there could even be four rate hikes this year, which means that the Fed might have to be a little bit more aggressive if they're going to control inflation. Now, inflation is hitting its all-time high. In fact, the last time we saw inflation this, this high was in, a, a, I, think, I believe it was in 1982. That inflation has been this high here in the U.S., so it is a factor, and I know it's not just here in the U.S., but of course across the the world. Now, we placed a trades yesterday. Let's go take a look and see how those trades are doing. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here as you take a look at the uh, um, the trades. We've got uh, currently right now. I'm holding into one, two, three, four trade positions. I mean, four trades at the moment right now. I've got multiple positions in on the US dollar CAD, and I've got multiple positions in on the uh, the, the CAD, uh, the New Zealand CAD, the Canadian Swiss. I've also got a few positions in on Canadian Swiss. And then we've got Aussie CAD as well, and we're getting very close to our break-even point on the Aussie CAD, as well as, of course, the, uh, the New Zealand CAD. You're getting close to that as well. So let's just take a quick look and see how the market set up technically. Because I believe that there are, might be some traders that are currently in these positions uh, still, and uh, I'm sure you're trying to, you know, trying to figure out exactly what the currency pairs are doing this morning. So let's go ahead and take a quick look and see exactly what it is that's moving the market this morning, and how we can go ahead and take advantage of that. So let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Now, traders, I want to remind everyone if you haven't already. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you may want to go ahead and do that right now. Subscribe to the channel, and there's two channels you want to go ahead and subscribe to. FX Big Dog channel, and of course the Traders Network Club. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you uh, also click the notification bell. And the reason why you want to click the notification bell is when we go live, you want to be able to know that we are going live. So we, all, we do broadcast multiple times throughout the week, and you want to make sure that you go ahead and get yourself notified. Now, also another thing is while you're down there, go ahead and smash the like button. And while you smash the like button, notice that in the description below, we have some details. Details about our trade signals, details about our, um, our uh, pub grabber trading tool, the tool that I use here in the trading room. And also keep in mind that if you do uh, you know, subscribe to the trading uh, pub grabber, uh, pub grabber trading tool, you'll also get more signals. So not only can you get signals that we're doing here inside the actual live session, but there are two separate Telegram channels. 
One is the, te the Telegram channel. It gives you signals of the trades we do here in the trading room. And then the other trade, uh, trade signals that we offer is actually the trade signals from our trade signal. So you get a lot more. In fact, we, we do about 155 trades a month. So you can get those trade signals if you check out the description below and check out the Pip Grabber trading tool. Now, there is obviously a clear indication of how we trade this strategy. And it is buying at support, selling at resistance. And sometimes support doesn't hold and sometimes resistance doesn't hold. And so what we do is we have a backup plan. And our backup plan is that we trade a cost averaging trading approach. Because we believe the markets wave within wave, within wave, within wave. So which means that if the markets are waving all the time, there is always going to be impulse and correction moves all the time. So if there's impulse and correction moves, then we, if we're wrong, we look to get out of the trades in the corrective move when the market's going ahead and pulling back. So with that being said, let's jump into some of the uh, details right here. And uh, good morning, David. Good morning, Robert. Uh, good to have you guys here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see. So this is the Euro US dollar. I'm going to go into a trade. Before I go to the Euro US dollar, I know we did not place a trade on the Euro US dollar, but we might this morning. Now that we're starting to see a little bit of a breakout right here, there's a good chance that we might go ahead and get in on that trade. But I'm going to come back to it. Let's put a pin in that one right here. And let's just take a look at some other setups that we have that we're currently in positions. So we are long on Aussie US dollar. We've been buying. And we started buying Aussie US dollar after the market created this wave down. Created a 1.618 target. So this is our wave three. And so I'm going to mark this off here because we're always looking at the alternative, right? And so the market never got to the 1.6, uh, 1.27 right here. And we started to see price trading once again back above that low that was formed over here. So which means traders that were probably coming back to retest the, uh, the, this, this consolidation support right here, right? And we're also coming back to take out this previous high right here. So let's take a look right here. So I've got approximately another 21 to 30 pips that the market can still rally up. Now, that's good that we know more or less when the next point of resistance is going to be. And the reason for that is because when we go to our trade right here, Take a look at the Aussie Canadian dollar. Aussie cat, I'm around about six pips away from my break even point. And my target for the uh, take for my profit target is set at around about what's that 9094. So I'm looking at 9094 as my actual target. Alright? So that means 9094 is my target. And that is currently right now 1994. It's currently around about uh, about 10 pups, not even maybe 11 pups, 11 pups away from where we're trading right now. So you can see traders, even though uh, we got in and we actually entered in, I think, five positions on the Aussie, uh, let's see here. Uh, we managed to enter on the Aussie CAD five positions. So we've actually got five positions on Aussie CAD, five positions on New Zealand CAD, and uh, five positions on the CAD Swiss and six positions on US dollar CAD. All right. So I'm very comfortable with where we are right now on Aussie CAD. Now, clearly over the last couple of hours, the market has moved pretty, pretty strong. We've had a sell off on Aussie CAD, but the markets have moved pretty strong over the last couple of hours. Let's find out exactly what's moving the market right here. Could it be U.S. oil that we start to see that move that's taking place? Let's take a look and see. I'm going to go to U.S. oil right here. Now, U.S. oil is doing nothing. Over the last couple of hours, nothing. So we can't really say anything uh, that, that something's coming off on U.S. oil. Let's take a look at the news. And yet we have some news uh, this morning. And we can see that uh, year, on Wednesday, we had an 8.30, we did have CPI. 
So CPI did the uh, data did come out. This is what's actually moving the market right here. And you can see that we did see uh, CPI actually ray, uh, uh, rise, <laughs> raise, <laughs> rise, uh, 0.5% from the 0.4% that we expected. The same thing for core CPI, also an increase to 0.6% from 0.5% that was projected. Um, so those numbers definitely showing an increase. Now that was at 8.30 this morning, and I believe the market is moving. I'm going to go to the 15-minute time frame, and I'm going to go back to, uh, let's go to US dollar CAD. Uh, let's actually go to... So if we look over here, exactly at 8.30 here, at 80, 8.30, price started moving back. So clearly, this is Aussie CAD. We're getting inflation coming out in the U.S., and yet the Aussie CAD is actually moving the strongest. I believe Aussie CAD, New Zealand CAD, all of the uh, commodity pairs are actually moving pretty strong. Look at that. Look at New Zealand CAD right here, also moving long. Now, uh, the, the strange thing is, here is a U.S. dollar CAD. Inflation comes out for the U.S., and US dollar CAD is not even moving right here. Did I miss anything? I mean, let's go take a look over here and see if anything that spot traded came out right here. Yep, uh, um, uh, consumer price index here for the US. That is what's been reported. I'm not seeing anything else here that's come out, out over the last few hours. Uh, sorry, well, actually, if we look over here, last hour. So nothing else in the last hour has been posted here in the news. And then we go ahead and refresh it. Nope, that's it. Just consumer price index. CPI is the only data that's been released right now. And yet we've seen some movement. Now, there is some chatter but on, on, on FIB reaction, but that's six, seven hours ago. So we don't really have any other data than U.S. data that's come out, and that's inflation. And yet we've seen a big move in the Canadian as well as the New, New Zealand traded against the, the, the CAD. Now, let's take a look at Swiss. Let's take a look at Swiss, Cat Swiss right here. And over the last 15 minutes, not, uh, we did actually, actually the last hour, that was 8.30 as well. So even Cat Swiss has started to move as well. Uh, not, a, not a whole bunch, we did get a little bit of move right here. It's not, not a big move. Take a look over here. 20 pips, yeah, it's a 20 pip move, not a big move. So we did get a move out of Cat Swiss right here as well. All right, so let's go back to um, uh, the the let's go back to the uh, the pairs that we're trading. Now we looked at the Aussie CAD. We're gonna go take a look at Canadian Swiss right now. We've been selling Canadian Swiss, like I said, we've got five positions in Canadian Swiss. Are we comfortable with the way the market's sitting right now? Let's take a look and see. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. Now, divergence is still a factor. For those that uh, divergence is still a factor right here, I'm going to go ahead and extend my FIBs all the way up here. So we had this wave one. We had an internal wave one, two, and three. And now we're looking for pullback. And so where can we expect the market to pull back to? Well, there's definitely going to be a support coming off that high right here. There it is there. That's going to be a old resistance become support. And then we're definitely going to come off uh, a bit of support of this level right here. I'm going to actually mark it off with that right here. So we're going to get a little bit of support coming off there as well. Uh, let's see what else we've got here on this four hour. Uh, we haven't taken out that high. So we're still, uh, we're still looking for price to work its way down south. Let's see here. Now, it's maintaining itself above this trend line as well, which means that uh, this wave one, two, three, four, looks like we're, looks like I should start focusing more on now the possibilities of price going all the way up here to the fifth wave right here. So this is where we actually expecting the Swiss, uh, the CAT Swiss to actually rally to. To complete that fifth wave up right here at the top. There it is. So all of these downswings that we've seen right here was just to indicate a correction move. And we actually, in fact, will be following the upward trends 
and buying on these dips for the buy for the if, if you're going to be trending, you're going to be buying on the dips. Now we're selling Canadian Swiss. Let's take a look and see where our break even and where our profit target is on this to see if we are going to reach that. Let's go ahead and pop that open. So we are uh, about 29 pips away from our break even. Our profit target is just below that. You can see it there. Our profit target is around about, uh, let's see here, uh, 73.11. So 73.11 is going to be our profit target right here. So 73.11 is going to take us, let's see here. Uh, right about this level right here. Now, I'm actually uh, not too concerned about this level anymore. I did go ahead and mark it off before, but you can see price did test it here. We did blow through there. So I'm more interested in that level there and then this level right here. So I can see that we could probably get price moving down about 60 pips right here to a support level. Uh, a minimum of 18, but I think we're going to blow through that uh, that old resistance, which is now becoming support. We'll blow through there, and I I think we're going to see anywhere between 50 to 67 pip pullback. All right, so which means that traders, this divergence we've seen right here is starting to work its way down. Push. Uh, remember, this is negative divergence, but it is also just a correction move, and so we'll be expecting price to go ahead and pull back down a little further down south right here to hit support. Now, um, now we've got uh, a, a David right here. We've got a trader right here who says that uh, uh, his strength meter shows that the U.S. and Canada are both weak this morning. That's why we are not moving. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that it does, make it, uh, does make sense of what's going on right here. If we do look at the strength meter, strength meter – Without even looking at the strength meter, if you look at price moving sideways, it's clear that we've got uh, either two strong currencies or two weak currencies. In this case right here, David mentions that the, they are both weak, and that's the reason why they are not doing anything, So, which is quite unusual, the fact that we've just got uh, some data coming out with uh, the U.S. that we're not seeing uh, the U.S. push in a direction and be the dominant uh, directional bias. So... <clears throat> So at the moment right now, uh, Swiss, CAD Swiss will continue to uh, hold on to our sell on CAD Swiss. Now, finally, the, uh, the well, not finally, but the New Zealand CAD right here. Let's take a look at our position on New Zealand CAD. So New Zealand CAD, uh, we are, and it looks like we're just about to get into our profit targets here on the Aussie CAD. Let's take a look at New Zealand CAD. New Zealand CAD is still about 21 pips away. So we're 21 pips away from our break even, and uh, we're looking at our profit target at 80, 85.66. So 85.66, look at that. Is that right? Yeah, that's six pips above the actual break even point. So we're looking at about a 20, call it a 27 pip target right now, based on where price is trading right now. So let's take a look over here on New Zealand CAD. And see the market still staying with inside its structure. So here we have uh, we had a wave one, we had a wave two, then we saw an internal swing, just like we saw the Aussie. There is an internal wave one right here. Then price pulls back, giving us the internal wave two, and then we did get down to the one point six range. Now, some might say that this is just a, a fifth wave down here. But I believe we did not get to the 127, so which means that this could be an irregular flat, which means price is chasing after that high. And that high, my friends, is at 85.76. Now, 85.76 is actually, in fact, just before, sorry, just after we actually hit our target. We're going to hit our target and take a profit at 85.66. So that is 10 pips before the, 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 the market reaches its target which is going to be uh, 85.76 up here at the top. So we're looking good. Now, what? let's take a look over here and see what is this uh, swing. Is this swing a fifth wave? Oh, wait a minute. It is a fifth wave. Look at that. Okay, so let me mark this off right here. This is, uh, this is cool. 
So yeah, we have an inside swing right here. And the inside swing looks like this. Wave one, two, three down here, four pullback, very shallow. And we actually completed that fifth wave. This is great news because whether we did not hit the fifth wave or we hit the fifth wave, it would just be a, a, a difference of saying it is in a, a corrective ABC if it hit the fifth wave. If it didn't hit the fifth wave, we would say it is in a corrective fourth wave in an irregular flat pattern. But either way, traders, the, the target for the bulls are still going to be uh, 85, 70, uh, 85, 76. I believe it might even be more than that this year. No, nope, 85, 76 is the number. So we're still going to be expecting price to rally up towards this level right here. The only difference now is, is that we're now looking at this as the large wave one large wave two up here and now this is the large wave three so which means traders that we are going to retrace up to this level right here and then possibly in this area when the market comes up here look for a down move so we are in a corrective move on the new zealand cat with the possibilities of it moving further down south now let's take an oh, let's take another look at the the, the market by simply going ahead and compressing the chart and looking at the broader perspective, right, of what's going on right here. I'm actually going to throw in the daily, get a little crazy, and here's the daily. So the daily has got this large range that we're in right here. Now, I want to go ahead and say that we did come off the support right here, so which means your price is going to go up to the resistance level. And if we look at our FIBs, we do look like a target to the upside right here at the top of the range. So which means, traders, that that this is a corrective pattern. Now, now I want you to look at the bigger picture right here. All right. We did go ahead and take out the high right here. Price rallied up above that. But we came back in and notice how the market is now holding uh, this level as a resistance level. And price is staying below there. So the next thing that I want to go ahead and look for is this level right here. Did the market, because this should be an irregular flat pattern. Which means that as price trades below this, we're then going to look for the market to rally. So let's take a look and see if this level has been breached down here. And if it has, then uh, uh, do we see another t test below? Well, let's take a look here. Well, actually, yes. Take a look there. See that level there? Let me change that, uh, uh, that color. So we can uh, we can spot it easier. Uh, make it a little thicker. All right, there it is. So there it is there in purple. And I'm going to go across right here. And you can see that we actually did trade below that. So which means, traders, that there is this possibility that, yes, we could go a little lower. But we definitely been thinking bullish on New Zealand CAD. So long term, we're thinking bullish on New Zealand CAD. All right, we absolutely can be thinking bullish on New Zealand CAD. Now, the question here is, does New Zealand CAD take off right now and go bullish? Or do we see that final dip in the market before the market goes back up north? And why are we saying that is if you go back to the four hour right here, here we have an internal wave structure. And remember, traders, we did go ahead and call this now once again. We went ahead and called this. Oh, what's going on here? We went ahead and called it a wave one, right? The large wave one, large wave two up here at the top. There it is. And now this is a large wave three, all right? So which means that when price takes out this level, which is that very, very key resistance level, then we'll see if price stays above here. And if it does, then maybe we are going north. But if it doesn't and stays back below here, we could be heading for that dip again before the next final rally that we're going to see all right so keep an eye on this the one thing i'm glad about right now is that we are in the right direction on new zealand cad so we've been buying new zealand cad we're not concerned about it we are in the right direction now it's just a matter of time and where the market's going to go ahead and turn but the one thing that we can say on this particular setup right here is that we are looking for price to go to this level okay um, all right, so David says, what is an irregular flat? Irregular flat is when price goes ahead and takes out the previous high, 
you know, upward AB boundary. So let's call it AB boundary, something like this. Uh, just a quick, quick description of that. This is a AB boundary right here, AB, okay? Price goes ahead and takes out the B right here, then comes back into the AB boundary and goes lower to give us a deeper C retracement before price goes ahead and moves to the D. So you have an A, B, C, D move, but price does this, does this sort of pattern right here, and that's called an irregular flat. All right. Now, traders, I'm comfortable with the New Zealand CAD. Let's go to uh, uh, the US dollar CAD right here and take a look at US dollar CAD. Now, what am I doing on US dollar CAD? Am I buying or selling US dollar CAD? I believe I'm buying, which again, um, I think I just lost my, oh, there we go, it's back here. So uh, I believe I'm buying US dollar CAD right here. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, there it is here on the left-hand side. Okay, so we are buying US dollar CAD. So let's take a look at US dollar CAD right here. Here's the four hour. So we've got uh, wave one, two, three. And then we have this uh, correction right here, and price is on its way down. Let's go to the one hour to break down the swings. Here's the swings right here, wave one, wave three. And it looks like we have an extended, it looks like an extended wave right here. Oh, so it looks like price is going a, bit, a little lower. And if you're concerned about the US dollar CAD, don't be. Because this is what we're seeing right here. Once again, we're seeing a bit of divergence here, right? A bit of divergence. And there it is there. Actually coming off this low right here. So we're seeing a price moving lower. We're seeing the oscillator mover. And also another thing right here, oscillator is moving bullish. Price is moving bearish. Which means we see positive divergence. But also keep in mind right here, at around about 25.04, there is our fifth wave that we're expecting price to turn from. So this is the inside structure that we have right here. We've got a wave one right here. This is a wave two. We had a wave three down here. Four up there. And five here. And so we'll be expecting a bounce off this level and price chasing after that high, which is about a 70 pip rally. So looking for about a 70 pip rally once price turns over here at this point. So we should be expecting US dollar CAD to actually start turning around once we hit that level, find support, and then bounce back off that level. All right, so that wraps up the, the sort of the, uh, um, the review on our trades that we're currently in. Let's look at the, the, US, the euro US dollar, a trade that we're not in at the moment right now. And do we want to get in on those? Let's take a look and see what's going on. All right. So here we have, here we have the uh, euro US dollar. We had an uh, upward uh, trend. We did have the market range bound for some time. I'm going to go ahead and clean up uh, inside this. Uh, I'm going to clean up everything inside right here. Uh, and so this is now uh, the one hour. Let's go to the daily. Uh, actually, the four hour should be fine. So if we look at the four hour, we had this downward swing. We had a rally. We had another downward swing completing our third wave. And now we're looking for this correction move. So just so that everyone knows that this is a, a four hour correction move that we're in right now. This is certainly not a downward uh, an upward trend that's starting. But this is a corrected move. I'm going to put a trend line in here. See if the market's at that resistance yet. So overall, I'm expecting Euro US dollar to sell off. Let's go to the daily. Let's take a quick look at the daily here. Oh, okay. Seeing a different picture here. We've seen a little different picture here. So on this at the moment right now, if I look at the the, uh, the chart, we can see that price 
is actually showing us that we broke through that trend line. All right. Broke through the trend line and we've come back to retest the backside of the trend line. And we saw a larger upward swing. Okay. There's a larger upward swing right here that is setting up for us to go ahead and bounce null. So on the daily time frame, we're getting a much better picture of what's going on here. And it looks like we even may have a falling wage here. Let me see here. Uh, a somewhat falling wedge. If you look over here, look at that. So we have a falling wedge right here, which means that once price breaks out of this, we're actually chasing after this top right here. So if that's the case, uh, let's see here. Are we expecting... I'm just going to look look at these swings inside here. Okay, so here was an inside swing. One. Three. All right, so we, all right, so look at this. So here we had an inside swing. Wave one. Let's just mark it off. Wave one, two, three, four, and five. Came up to the 1.27. We were targeting this level right here as the correction move. And price has gone way past that. You can see right here. We've gone way past that fourth wave low right here. And we did come back to retest the back side of the trend line. So overall, yes, I do believe that we are going to go bullish on this. So good. Now I can go ahead and clean up house on this. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to clean up. All these fibs going up. We don't need this now. I've confirmed what I need to confirm. And then I'm going to focus in on. Uh, let's go to the four hour now. And I'm going to focus in on these upward swings. Because I believe we are going to see a breakout of this falling wedge. And then a rally. Now that doesn't mean I'm not going to trade the correction. Because price, as, you, as we've spoken about it, price moves in waves. And so we, here we have it, wave one. And I'm looking for inside swings right here as well. Nope. Looks like traders, we are going to be on the sideline on a US dollar, um, Euro US dollar right here. First thing number one, I'm not at support. I'm not at resistance. I'm trying to see if I can find an inside swing that I could possibly trade. But I'm not seeing any happiness on that either. So I'm going to stand aside here on US dollar, uh, on Euro US dollar right here and not enter on euro us dollar right here until we get uh, something better confirmed now i i don't mind trading correction moves absolutely not because you're chasing after 20 pups and because we know that the market's moving these waves buying uh, at these support and resistance levels whether it's fib corrections or fib retracements it doesn't really matter um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stand aside because i don't have anything that's solid enough for me to go ahead and say let's go ahead and jump in on those let me take another look here And I moved it down to the one hour. And the answer to that is no can do. Let me see here. Give me one second here. far do we have for the support here 27 pips how far do we have it for the one two seven 18 pips, 20 pips. How far do we have it? Before we get to that resistance, let's take a look here. 31 pips. My trend line is drawn incorrect. My trend line is showing there. Okay. 
So we do have resistance up here. So yeah, I would probably want to wait for the market to get up a little higher there before looking to trade that. Um, let's take a look at dollar index quickly because this pair is going to be influenced by the, the movement of the dollar. We did it, David did mention that uh, we did see some sideways uh, movement between CAD and and then uh, between CAD and the US dollar just because of the uh, the range. Uh, Herb says we just sold the uh, US dollar. Maybe the trade copier. The trade copy did that. We did not do that here in this trade show. So the trade copy did uh, possibly did that, but not here in the trade show. So we did not do this here in the trade show. Look at the dollar. Dollar is falling. So the question here is, yeah. So with dollar falling, it's going to push the euro, uh, US dollar north. Uh, so what I've got to look right here is, do I see a, a correction move? Because we do say that dollar is going to be selling off. But you can see right here, it looks very much like the euro, US dollar. Just broken out of this consolidation, just like the euro US dollar did, and broken out. So we're gonna wait for it to get to support. Now, the the trade copy, just like Herb said, the trade copy has gone ahead and sold already on the euro US dollar. So it's looking for a correction move. But based on my technical analysis, we're at we're not at support or resistance level right now to go ahead and trade it. Now, I'm not saying that the uh, the euro US dollar is not gonna correct itself and move back and give us our 20 foot profit on that. But what I am saying is that. We are not going to enter if it's not at support and resistance based on our technical analysis. So we're approaching the market a little different than what the trade copy is doing currently right now. But that's okay. That's part of uh, you know uh, you know the part of the benefit of trading manually is that we don't have to just follow things you know based on uh, uh, you know sort of uh, structure uh, that is being implemented on one strategy because we are applying something in structure on another strategy. So there's two different strategies. Do two different ways of approaching the market. Neither one is right or wrong, okay? But it is, uh, we are sticking to a certain rule here inside the trading show. All right, with that being said, I believe we just closed out with the RZ CAD. Let's see, take a look right here. Uh, RZ CAD right here. I just got a notification. And yes, sir. We have just closed out on the uh, the RZ CAD. So we closed out with profit on the RZ CAD right here. We're still running the CAD Swiss. A US dollar, uh, we're running the US dollar CAD, and we are currently at the moment right now looking pretty good on New Zealand CAD as well. So let's see how this plays out. Remember, traders, if you want to follow our trades, make sure that you go ahead, make sure you go ahead and uh, check out our description below. In the description below is a Telegram channel that all the trades that we take here in this trading session, all right. And there's a difference between this Telegram channel based on these trades in this trading session compared to our trade copier. If you want to get signals from a trade copier, then you may go ahead and uh, register for the Pip Grabber trading tool. All those details are in the description down below. Check it out. And uh, um, you can go directly to our website. Go to uh, tradersnetworkclub.com and you'll be able to get access to that as well. I'm going to go ahead and post that um, uh, that information over here. Uh, let's go do this. Make sure, oh, but make sure that you guys are subscribed and you're following us on Twitter as well. Uh, make sure you are following us on Twitter. Uh, FX Big Dog is the Twitter account, and of course, Traders Net, uh, Net Club would be the Twitter account. And then subscribe to the channel, both FX Big Dog and Traders Network Club, to make sure you get into the live sessions. Now, uh, if you have any questions. Please go ahead and uh, email us. Um, email us at info at uh, tradersnetworkclub.com. If you have any questions about the trade copy or the pop grabber trading tool, go ahead and check out um, that email address and send us an email. Um, all right, traders. Just remind everyone again, uh, we will be back tomorrow at 9.15 once again. We'll take a look and see how our trades have played out. If you want to follow the trades, check out the, the, the Telegram channel down below in the description, and you'll be able to follow our trades. It's free. It's part of the, uh, the sessions that we do, and you'll be able to get access to that as well. Just go ahead and sign up with the, with the Telegram channel. And then finally, uh, once, you are, once you're still down there at that, uh, but you're checking out the description, don't forget, my friends, to smash the like button, all right? That's the only way that we get to be able to um, support this channel is by you guys, uh, or at least you guys get to support this channel by smashing the like button so we can go ahead and beat the algorithm, the Google algor algorithm, 
to get this video out to as many people as possible. So with that being said, traders, have an awesome day, and we'll see everyone back again tomorrow as we do our final session of the week and take a look and see how our trades are doing. This is the Epic Big Dog, signing off.